Okay, so now, last couple times, we talked about bonding, valence electron, electronegativity. Now we are going to talk about Lewis structures. And what we talked about last time, we said Lewis structures are a way to draw covalent compound because covalent compound is nothing but sharing electrons, is nothing but sharing electrons. So we need to find a way to draw and show bonding in covalent compounds. The first one we're going to do is PCL3. Is that a covalent compound? Yes, PCL3 is a covalent compound. Phosphorus trichloride, it has two nonmetals together. Now, I have a set of rules that work really, really well, and it will get you the right structure. So let's go over the rules and show you how to draw Lewis structures. Rule number one. Figure out the total number of valence electron for PCL3. So rule number one, figure out the total number of valence electron for PCL3. Now, if you remember, we said you can also look at the position on a periodic table to figure out how many valence electron you have. So let's do this one together. Phosphorus is in group 5a so it has five valence electron cl is in a group 7a it has seven valence electron but how many cl do you have you have three of them so seven times three five plus seven times three that would be 26 valence electron so that's rule number one. Figure out how many valence electron you have. Now, why do we care about valence electron? The reason we care about valence electron, because remember, we said valence electron are far away from the nucleus, so they don't feel the plus charge anymore. So they could play around. They're going to be involved in bonding. They're far away from their mom. They can run it, can do whatever they want. They're involved in bonding. So everything we talked about here, when we're talking about bonding or reaction, always we're talking about valence electron because they don't feel the plus charge and they can play around. They can be involved in bonding. So I have 26 valence electron. What that means is I have 26 electrons that I need to figure out what to do with. Now, the next thing, step number two, you're going to put the first atom in the middle, okay? You, which is phosphorus in this case. You're going to put the first atom in the middle and then put the rest around it, which is Cl. doesn't matter how you put it around it. Just put it around it, okay? Now, the actual, the more scientific rule is the least electronegative atom goes to the center. So the least electronegative atom goes to the center, goes to the middle. And usually, and usually that's the first atom, excluding hydrogen. Hydrogen could never go in the middle. So in this case, Phosphorus was my first atom. It's also the least electronegative atom, but the, the shortcut is, is usually the first atom. Goes to the middle, goes to the center, and you put the rest around it. Doesn't matter how you put it right now. So far, so good. Now what we're going to do, we are going to draw a line between the center atom and the surrounding atom. Okay? You're going to draw a line between the center atom and the surrounding atom. Now, the line that we just drew, what that line is, that line is a covalent bond. And I need you to remember that. What a covalent bond is, a covalent bond shares two electrons. The covalent bond shares two electron. Let's say these are my electron. So a covalent bond shares two electron. We're good so far. So based on what I just told you, I put the first atom in the center, the rest around it, 
and I draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom, how many electrons have I already put down? Remember what I said? I said each bond has two electrons, right? Each covalent bond has two electrons. So how many have I already put down? I've already put down six, right? I've already put down six. So I had two. Oops. I had 26 before. I put down six. 26 minus six is 20 electron is left. 20 electron is left. Okay. Now, the next rule is you have to look at the surrounding atom. Don't look at the center atom yet. And make sure each surrounding atom is happy. What does happy mean? Happy mean make sure each one has eight electron. It has the octet. Remember that. It's considered very sexy to have eight valence electron. Everyone wants to have eight. How many does CL have right now? It has two. How many more does it need to be eight? It needs six more to be eight. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now this CL over here, it has two. How many more does it need to be eight? It has in it six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look at this CL. The same thing. It has two. How many more does it need to be to be eight? It needs six more. Okay. Now what this means is that all my surrounding atoms are happy. This one is happy. This one is, uh, this CL is happy now because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one is happy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one is happy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each of my CL are happy. I'm going to put a little check because the surrounding atom, each one has eight. Now, how many did I just put down? How many? So I put six over here, six over here, and six over here. Six times three is 18. So I put down 18 electron and my surrounding atoms are happy. I have two electrons left. Once you took care of your surrounding atom, now you are gonna go to the center atom. I have two electrons left. I wanna put the two electrons on the center atom. So minus two, now I have no electrons left. Is my center atom happy? Yeah, phosphorus is happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight and phosphorus is also happy and i have no more electrons to account for we are good now what happens and i'm going to write this rule out so you have all my rules and then we'll do more practice problems later to see where that applies if the center atom is not happy and you have no more electrons left that's when you make double bond and triple bond okay i'm actually going to make it note right here so if the center atom is not happy and you have no more electrons left, that's when you make double bond and triple bond. Not the case here. The center atom is happy. We're good to go. So far, so good. Okay. Now, I emailed you guys a handout on geometry. I'm going to give you a second, pause this video, and then go get that handout for me. Okay, so you got the geometry handout I emailed it to you guys. Now, when I said at the beginning, I said it doesn't matter how you put the seal around the phosphorus, just put it around it for now. But let's go over what would be the correct geometry what would be the correct geometry of this i emailed you guys this this is the vesper geometry valence shell electron pair repulsion you don't have to know that one for my class valence shell electron pair repulsion now how do they come up with these geometries the way they come up with these geometries is that the atoms are as far away as each other that they could possibly be. 
Think about it this way. You and your siblings, when you're far away from each other, you guys, are, you guys get along perfectly. When you're too close, a little too much friction, right? Far away, happy. Too close, not so happy. The same way here. The way these geometries are put together is that atoms are as far away as they can possibly be from one another. Now, maybe you look at some of these geometries and you go, are you sure this is as far as the atoms can get from one another? Because when they're far away from each other, it's going to be less repulsion. One thing you've got to pay attention to is that this is right now is 2D. On a piece of paper, the best I can do is 2D. But in reality, what are these geometries? They are, they are 3D. So it's hard to show on a piece of paper what the actual geometry is because they're three dimension, right? So think about that. If you're looking at this geometry and going, are you sure this is as far away as they can be from each other? You have to think about that. I'm showing you 2D in reality. These are 3D geometries. All right, let's go back to phosphorus trichloride. Now, before you tell me that, so here is what we got, right? Here is what we got. We have our center atom here. There's three bonds attached to it, and here the Cl. Now, on a center atom, I have this. On a center atom, I have two non-bonding electrons. What do we call that? We call that lone pair on a center atom. They're not really involved in a bond, so I call that lone pair. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a second. You can pause me. Look at this geometry. Tell me which is the geometry for PCL3. Hopefully, you're shouting that the geometry is pyramidal because center atom, the dot is a center atom. You have a lone pair which looks like an alien. Then you have three bond. So our geometry for this one is pyramidal. That's the geometry. The geometry is pyramidal. So far, so good? Okay, let's go to next one. Let's go to next one. We're just gonna keep doing a lot of practice problem and we'll do even more practice problem next lecture too. NH3, okay? NH3, okay. Let's do this one together. You ready? Let's do this one together. The first thing you're gonna do is the total number of valence electron. Yes, nitrogen is five, hydrogen is one, but I have three hydrogen, so together I have eight valence electron. Now, next one, hopefully you're shouting the answer. The first atom excluding the hydrogen goes in the middle, so N goes in the middle. I'm going to put the hydrogen around it. I'm going to put the hydrogen around it. Okay, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom, okay? I'm going to draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. So far, so good? Okay, so that's, that goes for all of them. You put the N in the middle, put the hydrogen around it. Doesn't matter how you put it at the beginning. You draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. Okay, now, how many electrons have I already put down? We said each covalent bond has two electrons. We said each covalent bond has two electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I've already put down six balanced electrons. There is two left. Now, we have to make sure our surrounding atoms are happy. Is hydrogen happy here? Remember what we talked about for bonding part two. We said hydrogen and boron are the exception. Hydrogen and boron are not greedy. They do not want eight valence electron. Hydrogen wants only two valence electron and boron wants six. So hydrogen is actually happy. Happy. Happy over here. My surrounding atoms are happy. So my surrounding atoms are happy. I'm going to go to the center atom. I'm going to put these two electrons on the center atom. Okay, is my center atom happy now? It is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nitrogen has eight. So nitrogen has eight. The H has two that I want. So everyone is happy. And I have no more electrons left. I use all the valence electrons which are involved in bonding. Again, remember, when you have a pair of electrons on a center atom that is not 
involved in bonding that's considered lone pair. Quickly, look at this geometry. Tell me, what is the geometry for NH3 ammonia is? Yes, pyramidal still. Lone pair, center atom, three bonds together. So this one is pyramidal. Ready for our next practice problem? Okay, now what I highly recommend you to do, you can pause me, remember that, you can pause me. Now you pause me, do the CO2 on your own, and then check your answer with me. Okay, CO2, the first thing you're gonna do, figure out the number of valence electron, the total number of valence electron. Um, carbon has four, right? Carbon has four valence electron, and oxygen has six valence electron, but I have two oxygen. So all of them together have 16 valence electron that are involved in bonding. Valence electrons are involved in bonding. Okay, the least electronegative atom, which is usually the first atom, goes to the center. So carbon goes to the center. Then I'm gonna put the oxygens around it. Doesn't matter how you put it at the beginning. And what you're going to do, draw a bond mm, between the center atom and the surrounding atom. So far, so good. Okay. And we said that each covalent, eh, don't do that. Each covalent bond, mm, sorry about that. Each covalent bond has two electrons. So we have already put down four electrons. So I had 16 valence electron. I have already put down four electrons. So I have 12 electrons left to account for. So far, so good. So 16 valence electrons are involved in bonding. Carbon goes to the middle. Oxygen goes to around it. I draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. Don't forget that each covalent bond has two electrons. It has two electrons to share. So I've already put down four because two here, two here, four. So I have 12 electrons left to account for. The next rule, you have to make sure the surrounding atoms are happy. You go to the center atom last. Is oxygen happy? Hopefully you're shouting no. How many does it have? It has two. How many more does it need to be happy? It needs six more to be eight. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. The same as the oxygen over here. It has two, and it's six more to be eight. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. So my surrounding atoms are happy. My surrounding atoms are happy. This oxygen has eight. This one has eight. How many did I add? I add six here. I add six there. Six plus six is 12. So minus 12. I have no more electron left. Huh. Is my center atom happy? My center atom is not happy. It has one, two, three, four. It has only four electrons. My center atom is not happy and I have no more electrons. What do I do? If the center atom is not happy and you have no more electrons to left to give, double bond and triple bond. That was the last rule. So my center atom is not happy. It has only four and I have no more electrons left. Okay, now let's see how many does it need. So carbon has four, which means it needs four more electrons. It needs four more electrons. Now remember, each bond has two electrons. Do you agree? Each bond has two electrons. So how many more bonds does it need? It needs two bonds. It needs two bonds because each bond has two electrons, right? So it needs four electrons. Each bond has two electrons. So it needs two bonds because two bonds, each one, two electrons, two times two would be four. So how are we going to do this? It needs four more electrons, which is two bonds. Now we're going to make a double bond. We're going to take these two electrons, add it over here. We're going to take this one and add it over here. So we're doing that because the center atom is not happy. Because the center atom is not happy. Because the center atom is not happy. Is not happy. 
and we have no more electrons to give it. Okay, so they still have one, two, three, four electrons left on each one. And now the carbon is happy. Okay, now the carbon is happy. Again, remember, I had two electrons in here before, but I took two electrons here and I added to this. Two electrons here and added to this, right? So these are the two electrons and two electrons. And if you count how many electrons are on carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, now everyone is happy. So far, so good. Now, what is the geometry of CO2? What is the geometry of CO2? Now, when you look at the geometries, you can actually ignore the double bond and triple bond. That's not going to make a difference in the geometry. So the geometry, I have one atom in the middle and two things around it. So the geometry is actually linear. The geometry is linear. So the triple bond and the double bond doesn't make a difference in figuring out which geometry it has. It makes a difference in the bond length, which we'll talk about it later. So far, so good? Okay. We're going to do one more. Ready? I'm going to actually do a couple more. The next one. Next one is SO2. Again, pause me and do this. Pause me and do this. SO2. Okay. Hopefully, you've done this before. You've done this. Before. You paused me and you did this. The total number of valence electron is 18 valence electron. Sulfur has six. Each oxygen has six, together 18 valence electron. Okay. Now, which one goes in the middle? Sulfur goes in the middle, and I'm going to put oxygen around it. So you're going to figure out the number of valence electron. This one has a total number of 18 valence electron. And then I'm going to put the sulfur in the middle, the least en value goes in the middle or usually is the first atom that goes in the middle and i'm going to put the oxygen around it then what are you going to do you're going to draw a bond okay draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom that doesn't change center atom and the surrounding atom draw a bond now remember 18 electrons are involved in bonding how many have i already put down one two three four i've already put down four electrons i've already put down four electrons you agree okay because each covalent bond has two electrons so 14 is left to account for and what we talked about last time we said don't forget we have to look at the surrounding atoms first to make sure they're happy is oxygen happy no it has two how many more need, does it need to be happy it needs six more one two three four five six same as this oxygen has two in it six more to be happy okay great this oxygen has eight this one has eight my surrounding atoms are happy so 14 minus four sorry how many did you oh i did not just do that i was just testing you guys how many did i put down i put down six over here and six over here so i put down 12 electrons two electrons is left so i put down 12 electrons and i made sure that my surrounding atoms are happy two is left where does it go hopefully you're shouting the answer it goes into the center atom it goes into a center atom which is my lone pair okay now is the sura is the is the center atom happy so this one is happy this one is happy now let's go to the center atom one two three four five six it has six electrons one two three four five six it has six electrons it needs two more to be happy so it's not happy now remember what we talked about if the center atom is not happy and you have no more electron left that's when you make double bond and triple bond right so this is when i'm going to make the double bond now remember it has six it has six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It needs two more. It needs two more. And so I'm going to take it from the surrounding atom to give it two more. Now, it doesn't matter which oxygen you get it from. It doesn't matter which oxygen you get it from. You get it from one of the oxygen. So here's my sulfur. 
okay one of the oxygen over here remains the same it doesn't matter which one you get it from i got it from the oxygen because it's a symmetric molecule so it doesn't matter which one you get it from don't forget the lone pair remains the same on sulfur okay that is my geometry for so2 a lot of people make a mistake of me taking this and making a double bond don't do that that one again you had two electrons left you put it on the center atom leave it alone leave it alone okay and we and then we had no more electrons left that's when you have to make a double bond and triple bond using the electron around you so it's really key that you don't do anything with a lone pair over here this one has one two three four five six only six what you do you make a double bond with your surrounding atoms now some of you guys might have done this you took the electron from the other one you took the electron from the other oxygen and that is fine if this is what you did that is completely okay it's a symmetric molecule it's a symmetric molecule it doesn't matter which one you take it from so far so good okay okay nice job we're gonna do one more before letting you go okay let's do one more before you let them go the last one i want to do is pcl pf5 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 now before you do that i want to just make sure everyone is really clear with this okay everyone is clear with this again do the counting do the counting we did the counting we put two on the sulfur i had nothing left and this one had only six it needed two more so i had to make a double bond i just had, i just needed one double bond because i only needed two more to be eight because right now this is one two three four five six seven eight there was no reason to make the second double bond i needed one double bond that would give me enough electrons i need for the sulfur because sulfur had six it needed to be eight so i needed two more pf5 all right, what is the total number of valence electron? Hopefully you're shouting the answer. That is 40 valence electron, okay? Now, what goes in the middle? P goes in the middle. And F goes around it. Doesn't matter how you put it, put it around it. And then draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom, okay? We've done this so many times now. Remember, each covalent bond has how many electrons? Each covalent bond has two electrons. So how many have I already put down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I've already put down. I have 30 electrons left to count for. You have to look at the surrounding atom to make sure each surrounding atom is happy. Is F happy? No, it has two and it's six more. The same for every single F. Everyone has two and it's six more to have eight electrons. So for each one, I'm going to add six. Let me erase these ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because each one has two and it's six more to have a complete octet. So far, so good. Okay, how many did I add? I added 30 electrons. I have nothing left. Let's go to my center atom. Let's go to my center atom. Is phosphorus happy? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whoa, is extra happy. It has more than 8. Is it okay that it has more than 8? Yes. We talked about this during bond bonding part 2. We said that everyone wants 8. Everyone wants 8. That's the goal. But if you exceed the octet, if you end up having more than eight, that's okay as long as you are not on the second row of the periodic table. Is phosphorus on the second row of the periodic table? No, it's on the third row. So this is okay to be extra happy. Okay. Now, last thing to do before I let you go is for this, for PF5 and also for SO2, look at the geometry and tell me what the geometry is. SO2 geometry. 
what was the geometry for SO2? So you have one in the middle, two bonds, and one lone pair on a center atom. So it's bent for SO2. SO2 is bent. Again, double bond and triple bond, we're not going to consider that when we're looking at deciding which geometry we have. How about PF5? PF5. So I have a center atom, no lone pair on the center atom. One, two, three, four, five. It has five bond. Let's go back over here. Okay, what is that one? Can you guys point to me? Yeah, trigonal bipyramidal. One center atom and then five bonds around it. So this one right here is trigonal, trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, nice job. We're going to keep doing more practice problems next time and then to make sure you get this down. I will see you guys next time or I will hear you. You hear me next time. <laughs>